Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So in today's video, we're going to be building the full chassis on the Tamiya Sand Scorcher. Now obviously this is not original, this is a re-re, but this design is from 1979. So the beauty of this kit is you get a real feel for what Tamiya were all about back in the day. It's not even back in the day, is it? It's really right at the beginning of when they were making the transformation from plastic models into RC cars. So before we get into that, I just want to give a massive thank you again to Yoro RC for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know, Yoro RC can be found on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and obviously they've got their fantastic website. We also have a 5% discount promo code for you guys and girls to use. Um, all, that, all that detail and a link to their website is in the um, about section of this video and um, if you use them and you're going to buy some RC goodness don't forget to use that 5% promo code right so the build begins and this is going to be a long one isn't it because there's a lot to do as I said in this video this is just going to be the chassis build because it's quite involved as it is um, but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to this one so let's get right, it right so it takes longer to get all the alloy bits out of the box i'll show you here look there's a ton um obviously it's um all vac formed in the box which is awesome because that's what we like but um yeah it takes a while to get all those bits out anyway this is step one now we get a full bearing kit with this car as well which is awesome um the car doesn't have a differential in the gearbox. You can get an aftermarket one. Um, I'm actually really not bothered about that because this thing's not going to run that many times. So I'm quite happy for it just to be the fixed axle. Um, so yeah, just looking at instructions, it's basically just build the gearbox up first. So uh, yeah, I'll show you it before I bolt the two casings together. So you can see how it, if you've never seen one before. But uh, look at this gearbox. It's... Um, Right away, wrong side. These castings go together like that. There's an absolute shed load of um, thread lock needed for this kit, which you get. Um, so it does slightly slow the build down a little bit, um, having to um, thread lock more screws. Anyway, let's get cracking. Okay, so obviously that main gear drive is fixed, and then you've got. Um, your other what we don't do call it counter gear and the drive shaft gear so yeah now it's just a case of sticking it in the casing so this is how the gears go in <laughs> very basic as you would expect only thing you've really got to watch is that center counter gear because it goes in one particular way and then if i just hold that you see how that goes without the differential so yeah, next step now is to bolt the, the casings together i'll put a little bit extra grease in there and then I, put, I think we'll put the universal joints on. And that's stage one complete. So I put some extra grease in there. Seven big black bolts holding the casings together. And then the um, universal joints go on. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy design. A lot of work gone into that cast, hasn't there? Um, for, uh, for kind of very little happening inside it. Makes it kind of cool, actually. Right, let's move on to step two. Right, stage two is to get the rear arms on. Again, full cast arms. A um, couple of grub screws in either. And that's because we're now going to put the first part of the rear suspension on. Now, if you don't know this design, um, this is torsion bar suspension, which Tamiya used quite a lot of in the early days. Um, yeah, the, the kit comes with dampers as well that you fit later, but the actual spring bit, the tension bit comes from these bars. So yeah, step two is just to put all this together now. Right, that's step two, done. So I'll just show you this in a little bit more detail in case you've never seen how this works. So the rear arms are on, but they're not secured at the back. But um, there's a brass sleeve that goes in there and uh, a grub screw at the bottom of each arm that holds it. So the idea of the suspension is when, that, when that's out, you've just got this movement here. But basically this torsion bar turns, where is it? Fits into there. Let's do the other one while I'm here. So it gives you that angle here. So the idea is once this gearbox is bolted down, this this gives you your, your spring tension basically on this bar. So if I hold that, then you feel that you've now got 
that's how it's going to work and then of course you've got a damper that goes over here so yeah very um, very different from what we're used to nowadays right moving on to step three which is the motor assembly and drive shaft so let's dig all those parts out right so that's the bits for step three very straightforward so i am going with the kit 540 motor that's plenty fast enough for what this needs uh, or for more so for what i'm doing so you have this um motor cover that goes on these are the drive shafts obviously there's a bearings to go in these cups and the body pins are just to um hold the drive shafts in and well basically if the bearing pops out so you don't lose it and then there's a torsion bar what do they call it give they give it an interest in there a torsion bar pipe so that just joins at both ends to keep them at the correct angle right let's get that installed right that's step three complete and i just want to say i'm loving this this is awesome this truly is an awesome build again it's not the first one i've built but um it's just so enjoyable so the motor slides into the gearbox out casting and it only fits in one way it's on there's two pips on the inside that locate the motor in position and then you have this cover that goes over with three bolts and that's what holds your motor in and then the rotor shaft sticking out the other side um drive shafts are in with that bearing body clip just holding a bearing in and uh that's sort of the first time you can feel it sort of properly and it's it's smooth enough now that we've got this torsion bar pipe on um you can i can kind of show you because it holds it in position now so you that's that's the movement you get from that but obviously when this is down this sits in position anyway so that's stage three complete moving on to stage four which i'll now get the bits out but that's pretty much doing the other the other side attaching the spur gear pinion and i believe there's a couple of gear ratios so let's get the parts out okay i just want to show you you do get two ratios in the kit um which tammy are called high and low settings um i'm going to go with the high so the high is a 20 tooth pinion with a 65 spur if you went with the low ratio that goes down to a 15 pinion and where is it where is it and a 70 tooth spur so we'll get rid of those so as i say this is now going to be the high setting which just gives you a little bit more top end and less lower end but uh, either or i don't think it'd make a massive difference anyway let's get that fitted and that's stage four complete so pinion on spur gear on um there's a bolt that fixes the spur gear on and then um four bolts that put the uh, dust cover on around really tidy unit isn't it it's a really really nice looking thing it's fantastic absolutely love it right so looking at the instructions we're on to five which is to build the um put the rear cage onto the um body roll bar so that's step five complete which is just the rear of the, the roll bar which is actually a body mount and um, the plastic rear cage um now i will have to change this at a later date because if you watch the first video i've ordered this piece in alloy um and a matching front bumper which is going to be cool but i'm going to fit all the bling bits on in a later video so uh, i'm just building this completely to kit form right now so as i said that is number five finished and number six now we're going on to make the um rear shocks up that's interesting right let's get the dampers made right onto the dampers and they look absolutely fantastic but um, i don't think they work fantastic i believe they leak and a lot of people turn them upside down apparently so i've been told but I think what I'll do, I'm jumping ahead slightly, I'll fit them how they should be, but I'll keep my eye on them, and if they leak, I can just whiz them upside down. It's not a problem. Right, so next stage now, just to get some oil in these, and then put the rubber mountings either end. Right, that's section seven finished. Dampers made. Um, they're definitely not the best. You can feel that. Um, a lot of people go aftermarket on these. Um, but they do look good. <laughs> Uh, as I say, I'll keep my eye on them if they leak or not, and we'll whiz them upside down if they do. Um, they've got the rubber mounts on, so moving on to ste step eight is... So, yeah, we're going to attach the shocks and the cage onto the rear gearbox now. Right, that's stage eight finished. 
so that's just all that connected they actually do damp um, I fitted the first one on because I wanted to feel the difference so yeah they definitely do damp but um, yeah it is what it is isn't it it's uh, it's kind of cool in its own right if that makes sense but um, anyway yeah so that's the gearbox finished so now we're moving on to stage nine which is basically yeah we're just going to bolt the back end down and onto the chassis now right that's up to stage nine finished so now we've got the chassis and the metal plate chassis plate done um that's bolted down with two well one the middle one um this thing here i can't remember they call it something funny but as you screw back down tight this compresses but this and a front one actually holds the um radio box down which you'll see later so yeah that's in position um we also have fitted it gives you these two little rubber things that you've got to cut so you can slide it over the wire and then you've got to locate them in that hole to kind of seal it sort of almost waterproof it but um, I, I always struggle to get those in properly you never I always come away with it thinking if that's correct or not and finally why didn't you tell me I'd forgotten to put these um, the rear mounts in to, to this arm and then put the grub screw in so now the arms are on properly but um, I'd left those two bits out because I'm a donkey so that is basically the rear end finished and that now takes us on to stage 10 which is now the front end right moving on so I've just dug all the bits out for the front setup it's really different it's a this is really cool I enjoy the back end on this particular car or the SRB chassis I should say but I don't know I, I think the front the, the front ends my favorite bit of it all right that's section 10 so that's the first stage of the front end they're really, really cool. Um, if you ever wondered how the front suspension works, again, it's just on that's this spring here. So those two cast dots, that's actually different um, suspension settings. So if I just put it on the first one, so it goes there, and then obviously if I lift the front top arm up, that's that's your front suspension. Obviously it gets dampered, but um, yeah, that's all you get. Let me just put that back into position. So. I need them loose at the moment. So yeah, that's section, what did I say, 10. So I'm moving on to 11 now. We're gonna attach the steering onto it. Right, that's section 11 finished. So yeah, we've got it all together. It's, it, as I say, it's a fun part for me, this, but I remember the first time I ever built one and you're really sort of paranoid about it all because everything's loose and it's like, oh, it's something's not right. But it all comes together at the end. So in that stage, also, we've obviously got the front steering arms on. We've got the um, dampers mounted. So now we move on to 12, where we're actually gonna put the whole thing together. And that's section 12 finished, and it all comes together in that section. I've, I've, I know I just said it earlier, but I think this is my favorite ever thing to build from Tamiya, this section. I just love it. I don't know why, I just think it's superb. So it's, as you're building it, it's all rattling and stuff. So you put the three tubes in, of which the centre one locates with a bolt either side. So it puts that together. You then put these little screws in top and bottom on each arm, which sorts all this area out. And then, of course, you mount your shock to the top. So now that's that's all solid now we, with your steering. If I put that down. So you can see we've got the steering in there now. Um, and then the suspension's clipped in on the first setting. As I say, on that spring, you can move it to that setting back there to if you want more tension. But this is what the kit suggests. And uh, it feels pretty good, to be honest. I actually think the front end feels better than the rear end. And the, the dampers do make a big difference on this. Feel-wise, I'm not talking about sort of performance. But uh, yeah, that's that section done. So now we're moving on to 13. So we've got to build the steering servo and get a couple of turnbuckles done and then the whole front end bolts down. Right, so that's the servo server and turnbuckles, steering arms made up. You have to really keep this piece in at the moment because it keeps this servo server together. That's probably the most fiddly bit of the kit, building this servo server. It's really old school, as you can see. That big ring and it clips in. So if you don't know how it works, I'll try to show you if I can get enough pressure on it. So that's how your servo server works in both directions. Ooh, like that. So 
yeah turnbuckles are made so i'm just looking at instructions that's 13 so we move on to 14 where we actually bolt this down to the chassis but 15 is putting the front bumper on as well so i'll, I'll get up to that stage right that's the front end on as you can see all very smart looking four bolts hold the front end on and then those two bolts hold the front bumper on um turn steering arms are on and that's how your steering works very basic but obviously everything's now in position working so the next stage i'm not going to because there's so much to do to this car in the future i'm not going to fit the radio gear just yet we'll do that at an after date but the next thing now is to get the gearbox gearbox so there's sort of radio gearboxes sorted they have like a quick release screws that go in and then this has got to be bolted down because that helps the chassis flex because at the moment it's got that but once you get the box place it once you get it in position that flex stops pretty much so uh yeah i've got there's a large steering arm as well it's got to feed through the box so i'll get all that section done now right that's the steering arm made up as i told you it's a weird design but it all kind of traps so this box is designed to try to keep all the grime out but that's how that works uh, i'll have to probably adjust that later when the radio gear goes in and that's the box made up so there's four quick release bolts there um that's four little screws hold that on i always thought this was pretty ingenious spring loaded so you just turn it like quarter of a turn and it pops out like that obviously do all four and the lid comes off Put it in position like that, push it through, and then just turn it, and it just locks. I kind of always liked that. Right, only thing left to do now is put the second rubber mount on the chassis um, and bolt that down. And that's pretty much the chassis done to where I can do it. I'm going to do the wheels next. But you can see those rubber mounts hold that down, and then the only thing flexing really is that front end now, but it kind of really strengthens that center section up. Um, and then you can see the steering working. Again, I will have to adjust that at a later date, but that doesn't look too bad actually for a first attempt. So uh, yeah, so what I'll do now is I'll build the wheels up. Right, and that's the wheels made up. So again, I have got um, alloy outers on order. They've just not arrived yet. Um, so I've, I've just made the wheels up as normal, um, but I've not really kind of nipped them up. Um, so the, yeah, that's cool. Um, what else is there uh, to tell you? Oh, I mean, a lot of people struggle with these rear tyres. I understand that. But it's all about getting the centrepiece in. You put it in sideways and you get it all the way in the middle and then you just twist it. And I'll be honest, if you're really giving it everything you've got to get that in, you're doing it wrong. But anyway, it's trial, it's practice makes perfect. So interestingly, um, you've really got to make sure you get these rear paddle tyres the right way around. So if you can see the shape of the shape of the paddle as it's going, um, the direction it goes is this is forward that way. So that tire spins that way forward. So you got to make sure that you get your your opposite side the same because it's really easy to miss that. Right. So the only thing, obviously, front wheels are bearing in either side, um, but we do have these lovely um, wheel adapters for the rear that just go with the pin across. So uh, yeah, let's get those fitted. And that's that pretty much done. I'm really happy with that. Really, really enjoyed that build today. Really cool. So suspension wise, front feels really nice. I really like that. There ain't nothing wrong with that, as long as those shock stampers don't leak, but uh, feels great. Back, it doesn't really work because it does, but it's kind of pressing down. Because of the angle, obviously that's how it sits with that kind of angle so I've just straightened them slightly but let's see if this works that's basically how the sorry I've got this big aerial on it but that's basically how a rear suspension works um, front does dampen you can actually see that working and obviously there's no electrics in there yet gearbox feels absolutely great yeah that, I love that that feels great and then what I can do I've just dug the body out just to sit it on for uh, you know just to get a gauge of what we're doing now the let me move that back the body shell has um, a bracket so if you case you don't know the, those two holes there there's a metal bracket goes on the inside which clips onto this alloy 
so get on so it might have a tiny little bit more height at the back end so it's not I'm, all I'm saying that for it's not sat right but uh, yeah there we go <laughs> very recognizable car extremely recognizable so uh, yeah that's been a great day well my friends I know I've kept saying it through the video but uh, that was so enjoyable yeah it's just it's just awesome build it really is from start to finish I um <laughs> shouldn't say this but I never recommend things on this channel I don't think that's the responsibility of a, someone on YouTube just my personal opinion but what I would say after saying that is if you really want to experience what Tamiya was like in the early days then there's really only two kits for you that are kind of available still obviously the sand scorcher but there's two other other variants of the srb chassis which are still going um and then the xr what is it the xr 311 um probably more so the xr 311 but um you just get a real insight into what it was i mean if you were lucky enough to own an original back in the day and build it from new well Lucky you, um, I certainly wasn't. I had a battered SRB that was um, kept alive by my dad in his hobby, sh hobby shed in the back garden. But um, anyway, yeah, so it's not sat right with this. I just did that for me. But um, yeah, just what a lovely, lovely build. So um, that's about as far as I can go with it um, in this video. I think the next video will will attempt to do the box art shell and right now I'm really not looking forward to it I've got to be honest um, I don't even know how you do it I've not even looked into it yet um, but I did get a few tips about the bonnet um, painting in the unboxing video of this so yeah I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have to do some research first but the next time you see it it will be the body and then by then the alloy bits will come up so obviously we're going to put the alloy rear cage on it's going to have an alloy bumper gonna have alloy wheels and it's supposed to have a really detailed engine or replica engine in the back but um, as I'm making this video I paid for that seven days ago and he still hasn't dispatched it and I messaged him two days ago to see if everything was okay and he's not even come back to me that could be an issue but um, anyway I don't know how long this video has been but uh, it's been here so look at this area <laughs> it's just awesome isn't it um yeah so leave in the comments what you thought simple as that and uh i'll have a couple of days rest and then we'll attempt to body shell <clears throat> so before i go a massive thank you again to your rc for sponsoring today's video it's massively appreciated and um, all their details are in this video's description including a link to their website and more importantly our five percent discount promo code um and as to everyone who's watched again just a massive thank you um if you are new and you're still watching maybe give this video a thumbs up go subscribe and turn all notifications on for our weekly videos that'd be very much appreciated and as always my friends happy seeing.